Hello everybody, Coach Tickety here. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some very simple mistakes that I see players at every rank making, and we're going to be talking about how to hopefully correct some of those mistakes in your play. But before jumping in, I want to remind you guys that if you're really looking to improve your play, you should head over to GameLeap.com. Over there, you'll find hundreds of guides and more being added every single week made by our top level coaches. And the information in these videos is really in depth. This is usually stuff you'd only find by booking private coaching sessions with really high level coaches. And I know what you're thinking. You've heard this before? Is it really worth it? Should I really sign up for a membership? Well, here's the deal. This month only, we're running a 50% discount on your membership, so you may as well try it out, see if it's for you, see if these tips can help you improve, and go from there. So use that code you just saw on screen and click the link below to get your membership started. All right, the first mistake I want to talk about is defensive overreactions, or basically using too many cooldowns just to stay alive during a fight. There are two common issues here that are both contributing to this problem. The first is poor positioning, and the second is simply panicking too often. If you don't have strong positioning, and by which I mean if you're not using enough natural cover, then you'll be forced to cycle through your defensive resources just to heal yourself up from damage or absorb important cooldowns from the enemy because you're too vulnerable of a target. Every single Overwatch hero should be abused using natural cover whenever possible in every single game that they play. Even if you're playing a tank like Reinhardt, who sometimes puts up his own natural cover, you want to be using walls, corners, high grounds whenever you can, just to make sure you have time to regenerate your shield or it doesn't get poked out before a fight starts. You can think of it this way. Your defensive resources, be those shields, healing, or cooldowns, help you survive in open space. But you better have a damn good reason to be in open space in the first place. Otherwise, hide behind those corners. And the next thing I mentioned there is that people are panicky and they tend to overreact to situations committing too many defensive resources to a single threat. Let's use Baptiste as an example here, a support with two very strong defensive cooldowns in both his regen burst and his immortality field. So let's say you're playing Bap and you're being focused down by an enemy Tracer or a Genji or some aggressive member from their team. Now when they start focusing you down, you don't want to panic and press all your buttons all at the same time, you want to think about what's really necessary for the moment and only use what they're forcing you to use. So maybe you start with your regen burst because it's a shorter cooldown, and then once you're healed up, maybe they backed off and you've managed to save your lamp. Or if they do keep focusing you down, you've now got another cooldown to, again, keep you safer in that space for a longer amount of time. Coaches sometimes refer to this concept as layering your resources one after another versus stacking them all up together all at once. Pretty straightforward here, you don't want to find yourself out of resources too early during a fight since once they're gone, you'll wish you had them. If this sounds like you, then the first step to fixing this problem is to designate your threats. Whenever you can, take a look at the score board, ask yourself who the biggest threats are, and then ask yourself what resources you're going to use as a response to them. Going back to Baptiste again, you can use regen burst to heal up most sources of burst damage, but anything that will one shot, maybe a Rhine pin or a tracer pulse bomb, or things that have anti-healing like Ana's biotic grenade will require your immortality field, so you can pre-plan that reaction instead of panicking in the moment. This anticipation of those threats is a big part of improving your reaction time once those things hit the field. So keep your eyes open, start trying to plan out your resources and make sure you're not wasting them too early. The next common mistake I see all the time is people getting too tied down to the objective, whether it's a payload, a cough point, or even the push robot. Now, of course, objectives are the way you win games in Overwatch 2. You need to pay attention to them when it's appropriate, but that doesn't mean you should shackle yourself to the payload and never leave its radius while you're playing. And it also doesn't mean when you're trying to retake an objective or move into a defending team that you should just beeline it towards the objective every chance you get. That's often a surefire way to get yourself killed. So the best way to solve Solve this problem is to change your mindset. Your biggest priority shouldn't be around the objective, but around map control. Make sure that every time you win a fight, or as you're approaching into a fight when you're trying to take an objective, that you're looking around for important high grounds, flank routes, or open sight lines that you can take control of before turning your attention to the objective. The idea here is to simply give yourself and your team some sort of positional advantage before going all out on the point. Typically your goal here is to set up multiple angles around the enemy, and you'll do this in one of two ways, either by setting up crossfire angles for important long range damage dealers or by corralling the enemy team into closed space so that you can easily surround them. A great example I see all the time is when teams are attacking King's Row first point. Many teams think that the only way to attack this map is to walk into the statue and then walk onto the point and then see what happens. But if the defenders have even a single member using the high grounds around this point, then the attackers will find themselves falling short since they likely won't have any tools of disrupting that threat or mitigating any of their damage. However, if the attackers take the time to clear that 
Hagron space by moving around through the clock tower and pushing all those members down onto the ground, then once this happens, the attackers have quite literally evened the playing field. And from this position, they can even choose to leave some of their own backliners up on the high ground and surround the enemy defenders who have now grounded themselves. Whatever the case or whatever map you find yourself playing, I promise there are more creative ways to attacking a point than simply running at it. So try to find those important spaces for map control and I promise you'll do better. The next mistake I want to talk about is when players fail to time themselves around their teammates. So this usually means they're either going in too early or they're showing up way too late to a team fight. If you often find yourself going in too early during a fight, it's likely because you're tunnel visioned on what the enemy team is doing and not putting enough attention to what your teammates are doing. Opportunities for strong solo play do present themselves in Overwatch, but they shouldn't be what you're looking for when you're playing aggressively. You should be looking to time yourself around the availability and effective reach of your teammates. So all I'm saying here is before you go all in trying to one clip that person in the back line, make sure your teammates are at least around if not getting aggressive themselves so that you're not the only one taking pressure once you go in. If you do go in too early, what's going to happen is five members of the enemy team are going to have a very easy time focusing you down, wasting all your resources, and you're not going to have enough time to make whatever play you were looking for work. But playing around our teammates buys us more time, takes some heat off of our back, and makes us find more success more often. So make sure you take the time to check up on your team's positions and whether or not they've got important cooldowns available before going for that all-in. But on the other side of things, if you're showing up late to a team fight, it's a different problem altogether. What often contributes to this situation is actually the opposite of the previous one. You might be paying too much attention to your own team and waiting for a clear reason to go in when your monkey jumps in or when Genji uses his blade, instead of reading when the enemy might be falling back or at disadvantage when you're able to push into them aggressively. To improve in this area, think back to the previous advice we already talked about and that's not overreacting defensively. The advice I gave there was to pinpoint specific threats that you need to react defensively to. When you're looking to get aggressive, all you need to ask yourself is, are those threats off the field? Are they too far away from me? Have they used important cooldowns? Are they back in the spawn room? If any of those are the case, you should be looking to push up more aggressively and helping your team flow into the team fight forward instead of holding them back by playing too safe. Whatever the case is, if you find yourself going in too early or showing up too late, it contributes to the same problem that is catastrophic to a team team in a game of Overwatch. You're getting desynced from your teammates. When this happens, you're not able to reach the same peaks as a coordinated team would if they're all engaging together at the same time, but also you run the risk of making every fight you lose even worse. If you're elongating your deaths and staggering yourself at the end of a team fight, or if you're getting picked off early and leading your team into an early defeat, these are massive problems for a team in Overwatch and can lead to a very quick defeat where the enemy team just snowballs completely out of control. So whenever you need to, take time to reset, look for your teammates, try to sync up with them, and make sure you're not falling behind once fights get started. Moving on, the next mistake I see everywhere is that players are trying to win every situation they find themselves in. What I usually see happen when players make these mistakes is that they won't recognize when they're at disadvantage. They'll find themselves in 2v1s or separated from their team or just out of cooldowns, and they'll still lock themselves into these fights and try to battle it out to the very end. Here's the thing. You can't always out mechanics your way out of a losing situation. So while it might be possible for you to survive or maybe even turn these situations around in your favor, I would highly recommend just simply giving up space instead whenever it's appropriate. Even if it means giving up your hold over an objective or separating yourself slightly from important teammates who are aggressive, making sure that you're able to stay alive should be priority number one. You can't make any plays when you're dead. Another way of looking at the situation is to think of the enemy's perspective. They are committing their time, their attention, their cooldowns, their positioning, all so they can get a kill onto you. Do not give them that trade. Waste all of those things instead and survive anyway by giving up space and rejoining the fight later. If you can do this enough times and trade up favorably in all these situations, then you will outlast any opponent, no matter how many cooldowns they have. A good rule of thumb is while well, positioning and healing can overcome damage output from the enemy, as soon as they start using cooldowns to get on top of you, you need to make sure you've got enough defensive resources to respond, otherwise you need to back up. Just keep in mind guys, when you play Overwatch, you are bound to make mistakes. And and that's fine, everyone else is making mistakes too. The important part is to learn from them. So hopefully, the advice in this video gives you some steps to move forward and keep progressing as you improve at the game. And this is far from a comprehensive list. Players make mistakes 
all the time. So let us know down in the comments, what are some mistakes that you've managed to overcome as a player while you've been improving at the game? Or better yet, what are some mistakes you are tired of seeing your ranked teammates making and maybe we can help educate the player base? In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. And if you're looking for more tips and tricks for Overwatch 2, go check out the Game Leap website where we've got hundreds of guides for Overwatch 2 as well as plenty of other games. The guides on Game Leap will go more in depth than the average stuff you find on YouTube and include stuff like role and hero courses, step-by-step -step map and ability guides, and everything in between. Go check it out and start your membership today.